Kia ora everyone, uh, I'm going to go over how to create a simple cube using Grasshopper and Rhino 8. Uh, so hopefully you've downloaded Rhino 8 uh, and to get it started uh, I'm just going to do a quick shortcut. So on a Mac computer if you go command key and space uh, that'll bring up uh, what's called spotlight search. On a Windows computer you can just hit the Windows key and then type in in this case Rhino here it comes up with Rhino 8 so I can just push return or enter uh, and then it will start to load so you can see it it's loading uh, getting the license um, and then by default it comes up with recent projects so you can double click on on one of those as a quick starting point um, I'd also like to just point out um, the there's some standard templates which are, I think are really helpful so uh, so I'm going to do um, recommend that you use large objects meters depending on what you're doing so in this case uh, especially within architecture field that um, the meters is a good unit to then transfer uh, into other bits of software so um, uh, I would suggest, suggest opening that so we can uh, open this so double click on that and it will open so now we have our Rhino 8 window I've just made it a bit smaller um, so that uh, I can have Grasshopper open as well so by default this comes up like this uh, we want to open Grasshopper so there's a little uh, button here that we can click to launch Grasshopper and that will load up uh, there's some getting started with Grasshopper uh, scripts that are quite useful so I recommend just having a look at those uh, and then uh, this is the whole document um, that we do most of uh, the scripting I guess in uh, or visual scripting in Grasshopper uh, I'm just going to open an existing uh, script that I have um, so uh, to give an overview of what's going on um, then we can sort of work uh, from that so by default uh, we have the four viewports here which is quite useful I'm just gonna um, go into perspective so we can double click on the little heading there uh, I want to zoom to the full screen so I can click that uh, and then you can see that we've got um, two boxes here that I've created. Um, uh, at the moment we're just in wireframe view, so if we click on this, or shaded view, sorry. Um, but we can change how things look really quickly, so I'm just going to go to monochrome. Uh, so you can see quickly how um, we can change the way it looks. Um, also, I just wanted to go over the, the value of parametric modeling um, so here I've got these numbers these sliders that I can adjust so here you can see I'm adjusting the, the cubes or the boxes really quickly so it allows us to um, test ideas and modify them uh, without having to remodel or draw things again so you can see how I'm adjusting different elements I can even rotate uh, uh, parts as well um, depending on what I'm trying to achieve so uh, the way we wa want to start to conceptualize what we're doing is starting with um, the left hand side and then moving across to the right so the data flows from the left to the right so we have these sort of input conditions and then we build up from there. I've got these little headings to help us sort of organize our um, script so here we're starting with some numbers or inputs of some kind then we've got some points some vectors so that gives us some directions uh, in this case surface or planes so I'm using planes and then we're sort of turning those into solids and then we're transforming those in some way so uh, what I find by default with um, 
Grasshopper, the way it displays these components, so these little things are called components, um, a little bit sort of confusing. So uh, once you've got Grasshopper open, I recommend uh, coming up to the, the, the menu bar at the top and then clicking display and then draw icons. I find the little images easier. This is up to you. You can decide what, what works for you. Um, but it relates to uh, the menu tab there as well. Uh, also, I recommend drawing full names. So here we can see uh, what each uh, component um, element is, so or input or output. So I recommend using those. Uh, and then the final one is draw fancy wires. Um, this won't affect us just yet, but later on as we get more complex, uh, it allows us to read what's going on a bit easier. Right, so uh, I'm going to delete this and then we're going to rebuild it. So let's just select all this, um, delete that. And you can see our model disappears. I've got some other things going on there. Um, and then we don't need that. So let's um, start creating something. So it's a good idea to sort of start with some points. Uh, so to get a point, if we come up to vector, um, there's the construct point. So we can click on that and then click down here. And that gives us a point. So you can see, let's go back to uh, wireframe at this stage, or shaded maybe. Um, so if we just bring that around, you can see uh, the uh, X coordinate along the red there, the Y along the green, and then we've got a Z coming out uh, of that. So we've got this point. Um, we want to be able to adjust that. So we can come up to params um, and select a number slider. So that's what we had before. And by default, um, that goes from 0 to 1 so we can feed into that and you can see the little point jump uh, when I did that so I can move those along so we've got that moving back and forth but that's only going from 0 to 1 we want a little bit more control in that so I'm going to just delete this and then I can uh, double click um, this is a bit of a shortcut and I find it easier to do this so I can just type in a number so I'm going to go 5 and then I want it because we have a using a unit of of meters uh, or a, yeah a unit of meters we need to then sort of think about how much resolution we want so I'm going to put point zero 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 so that gives us sort of more control um, down to a millimeter scale so I can then have the slider to 5 so if I Put that into the x coordinate or oh, just zoom out you can see now we've got more control so you can see that's moving on the x axis uh, between 0 and 10 um, so it got a little bit more so i'm just going to put that back um, there we can uh, use that same slider multiple times so i can just feed that into the x coordinate I mean into the Y coordinate as well and you can see that jump across so now it'll move at the same on both of them I don't want that I want individual control so I can just come down here command C or control C and then control V or, or command V depending on what type of computer you're using and I've just copied and pasted that and then I can feed that into there so now we have control over each each one individually each uh, axis so that's given us a point uh, so that's okay to start with I'm just going to go back to zero for now uh, now we want to create um, uh, a surface so to do that um, we probably want uh, two points so we can actually just copy all of this so another way of copying things so I just clicked and dragged over there is to, to click on them and start to drag and then hold down uh, control on a Windows computer or option on a uh, Mac computer and I can just make a copy and bring that down. So now we've got two points so you can see I can control um, the other one. Uh, so I'm going to set that to five by five. You can see that's a little bit difficult to do. 
So I can come in, double click on the middle of that slider uh, and set where I want that. So I can set that to be five, hit the little green button and then in OK. So you can see that sort of automatically sets for us. So double click on the middle of that slider, um, double click there, five, uh, and then check that it, and then OK. So now we've got uh, these two little things there. So we've got these two points that we can control. Now we want to sort of connect that to a surface, or in this case a plane. So we're going to go up to surface, and then under primitives there's a plane surface. So this is just a really simple one. We bring that in and it brings in quite a large plane, but we don't have any control of that. So we want to then feed that in. So uh, I can feed this into there. Um, and that gives us a starting point. And then uh, I'm going to just get rid of those because I don't actually want a point here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that and then take that up to there and then that up to there. So now you can sort of start to see uh, where where this sort of sits. So you can see we can change the starting point of this uh, um, and then we can change the size of this. So it's quite a good um, uh, idea to also start to number some of these things. Let me make this a bit bigger. Uh, or not number, name. So I can double click on the... I'll just go back. So I can double click on the left hand side of this and give it a name. So let's uh, uh, start uh, point and that can be X. So let's put an X in there. OK, and then we'll call this something similar. So start point Y uh, and then this one's going to be uh, um, width and then length. OK, so now we can see what we're controlling when we're adjusting these things. Uh, so um, we've got the different elements going on and then we've got this plane. Now we want to make this sort of three dimensional. So to do that we need to extrude uh, the plane. So a quick way of finding extrude is double clicking and then just typing in the name of what we're trying to component we're trying to use. So here's extrude here so then I can just click come and click on that. Um, and then the solid asks for a couple of things. So it asks for a base. So we can take the plane that we've created and put that into a base. Um, but it doesn't know what direction we want to extrude this. So we need to um, give it a direction. So under uh, vectors, so there's a whole lot of things up here. Um, uh, and if we click under vector, there's a few. So we want to go up in the Z direction, so out of the page. So we can come and click on that, uh, put that under our vector list. And then we need um, a direction for that. So if we put in a number, so I'm going to put in the 5.00 again, so with that 5 meters. Um, and then I'm going to call this height, H E I, oh, click on the right bit. Double click up there, H E I height, make that capital just to be consistent. So now, if we start to connect all these parts together, we can connect that and then into direction. And now you can see we've got our cube. So we've got a little cube that we can control. So I want to make it higher or lower, I can do that really quickly. Um, also, you can see I've been a little bit sort of sloppy in, in how I've 
organize this so I can select all those and then um, click the little buttons at the top here to arrange how they go together so that's just align them all I can even then just click those and move those up um, if I hold down sh shift it locks that to go uh, in orthogonal so um, you can see I'm starting to organize how I get to this so then we've made the little cube and we're happy with it I'm gonna make it uh, just make this five um, uh, so uh, we're happy with our cube so then once we're sort of figured out what we wanted to create uh, we can then bake it so in this case we've got a solid I'm going to right click on the center so just be aware let's zoom up on this a bit um, if I right click on this side I get a certain menu come up if I right mouse click on the center I get a different one and if I right click on this I get another one again so here I'm just going to right click in the middle um, and hit bake uh, and then I'm going to sort of put it on this case a layer so uh, layer 0 so I can control that later on and depending on the complexity of what you're doing it can be a really good idea to group some of these things so uh, I recommend saying yes uh, often in this case I won't um, so because uh, it's just a simple object so now uh, I can come into uh, Rhino um, and click and you can see it's selected uh, the object so it's baked that geometry into Rhino uh, I've got um, let's just move this because you can't quite see the gumball uh, selected and that's this little controller in the middle which then allows me to uh, move this so here's the the object that I created um, and here's the one uh, that is still in Grasshopper. So if I close Grasshopper, um, that disappears. And if I open Grasshopper again, it comes back. So um, I can then adjust. I want this to be uh, a smaller. Ooh, don't want to move it. A smaller box. So uh, and then I could bake that again. So you can see how quick and easy that is to control. Um, and then I can change the way it looks by just clicking up on um, the top right hand corner and going let's just go to monochrome so then we get a simple white box um, really quickly uh, so hopefully that was helpful and then the next tutorial I'll go over um, how to add another box and then how to um, make a boolean difference of those so uh, I'll see you soon